I'm of a generation where we grew up with the early games consoles such as the Sega Mega Drive and the Super Nintendo, but we didn't have things like mobile phones, streaming services and Netflix. Instead there was still very much a strong culture of going out to play with friends, being active and enjoying nature. I guess in a lot of ways I feel quite fortunate to have grown up without an iPad and instead we built dens and played hide and seek in the local forest or we searched for crabs in the rock pools on the beach near where my granddad lived. The point is, is that all my experience of woodland and forest in my childhood and my years of mountain biking will have undoubtedly influenced my view and appreciation of nature as an adult. What I did over 25 years ago will have shaped the photographer that I am today and I feel it's important that for anyone who gains from the gift that is nature to communicate its benefits to all generations. And in my case, I feel compelled to express that it's the therapeutic benefits of woodland that is fundamental to my vision and message as a photographer. A friend and fellow photographer once suggested that when I started on YouTube, that I shouldn't pigeonhole myself to woodland photography, as I'd have more commercial success if I covered more aspects of the landscape. This suggestion, although given with the best intentions, troubled me for a while. Why, as creators, photographers or artists, should we feel obligated to appeal to the masses and believe that more money and more followers is directly linked to success? My own personal view is that success is determined by happiness and sustainable creative fulfilment, which may correlate with enough financial success to feed a passion born from a genuine love and respect for nature. If what we share is more than just a great photo and is instead a demonstration of our own understanding and empathy for the natural world, then what we're communicating runs a little deeper. You know, it doesn't have to be as simple as take a look at this photograph and here's the fantastic camera that I used to capture it. If our core well-being is a beneficiary of what we do, then our photography can be a portrayal of this is why I shoot here, this is what it means to me, this is how it positively informs and influences my own photography and perhaps you could personally and creatively benefit from this environment and approach too. I genuinely love what I do and obviously I hope that you guys enjoy the images I produce. If that's the case and you're interested in understanding how I approach and produce woodland or forest images then I cannot stress enough how it always was and always will be, well-being first and photography second. I don't want to reiterate my history of chronic pain, but the physical and emotional distress is what led me to woodland, almost like I was retracing my childhood, finding a new purpose in woodland, and the moment I realised that that environment offered my primary need for therapy, then the byproduct of fulfilment in photography simply fell into place. Someone once contacted me and said, I want to be good at woodland photography, but I feel constantly frustrated. And my response to that was, it's very hard to create a good photograph from a starting point of frustration. So perhaps a change in priorities and expectations is what's required. We should always put ourselves in places that promote positive emotions, such as excitement, relaxation, or calm. Prioritizing ourselves, what we feel, and understanding those emotions is far more likely to lead to an aesthetic that's not only a reflection of ourselves, but will result in images that actually mean something to us, and perhaps more often than not, may resonate with others too. There's a practice that originated in Japan called Shinrin-yoku, or forest bathing, and it is now one of the cornerstones of Japanese healthcare. Forest bathing isn't something that I've ever practiced myself, but I frequently enjoy the same benefits of reduced stress, calmness, and improved physical health and mood. As I said, if we prioritize well-being, then in turn, we will likely free up our creative capabilities as we reconnect with nature and align our own creative ambitions with nature's needs. A number of studies have demonstrated, and this is my own experience too, that empathy for the environment increases drastically the more time that we actually spend in natural places, rather than just 
thinking or reading about them. So if more of us head to the woods to seek out its freely available benefits, then the more likely these places will be preserved for future generations. Now just think about that for a second. If woodland and well-being have led me to share this passion and have over 1,500 trees donated to Meg's Grove, then just think of the potential exponential effect of having each new person do the same and use photography as a force for good. It took an unfortunate event to start a life-changing journey that began with our dog Meg and then the discovery of woodland photography, its profound health benefits and how it's aided an increase in a sense of identity with where I live. My growing passion, respect and care for the woodlands that are available to me locally is what's resulted in my most successful photographs and this YouTube channel and becoming a full-time photographer. I therefore feel as if I was doing you a disservice if I don't stress and reinforce that message as it's played a far bigger role in my work than anything technical, any gear and any post-processing technique. So I'd like to put it to you and challenge you to find your own woodland or just any space in nature where you feel comfortable and spend some time there without the camera or any photographic goal. You know, we all need a release from the pressures of life, whether that be relationships, work or health and taking a walk in woodland helps to relax the mind and put things into perspective. So allowing yourself to relax, re-energize, connect and better understand the places you love to photograph can also offer some creative clarity and a less clouded photographic vision. You know, every woodland and forest is unique and special. So I urge you to get out there and find your own experiences and connection. 2019 celebrates 100 years of public forests and the Forest Commission, who are currently promoting the benefits of spending time amongst trees. For more information, please take a look at the video description and share your own photographs using the hashtag below. But thank you very much for watching this episode. And as always, I hope to see you for the next one.